It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood when we can discuss Jesse Smuggle Nuts because this documentary that Fox News is coming out with is going to give more details, give more information, give more of a perspective from the Osendiro brothers about the stupid hate crime that they thought was going to be a good idea from a dude who obviously wanted a Subway sandwich up his ass. Osendiro brothers exposed Jesse Smollett's attack in antonomy of a hoax. Abba Bola and Alibajab, I can't even pronounce those names, and I'm not even gonna try. The Osadira brothers claimed the morning they prepared to allegedly help actor Jesse Smuggled on stage a racist and homophobic attack against himself in 2019, he didn't show up on time. We made sure we got there at 2 a.m. sharp. We had no phones because he did not want us to bring any phones. So 2 a.m., he was nowhere to be found. He was not there. So we were like, damn. What do we do? We didn't have no way of contacting him. He had no way of contacting us. So we waited here for about four minutes. The other brother chimed in and said, but it felt like forever because it was so cold as a bitch. So I saw him out the corner of my eye and I was like, okay, that's him. Let's go. The Osendaro brothers returned to the Paz Chicago block for the first time since the chilly January 2019 morning of the five part docuseries, Jesse Smuggle Nuts, Anatomy of a Hoax. In their first exclusive interview since 10 Testifying at Smollett's trial in 2021, the brothers share exclusive details of their alleged roles in the made-for-TV drama captured international headlines for years. Their attorney, Gloria Rodriguez, is listed as an executive producer of the docuseries. This thumbnail for this docuseries is mwah, chef's kiss because how stupid do you need for this to be for anybody to actually sit back and say you know what let's spend time making a five-part docu-series on an idiot we got all the information we need let's just keep it going for the literal fuck of it as we crossed the street we said hey to get his attention hey n-word he turned around looked at us and that's when we started yelling the famous slurs he wanted us to yell hey aren't you that empire f-word the osadaro brothers claimed to the camera crew in tow we started tussling moving around and then i pulled him to the ground the one brother said to smuggle nuts he wanted it to look like he fought back and above all i fought the back <laughs> That was very important for him because he said he don't just beat my ass, make it look like I'm fighting back and whatnot. Man, throw this dude away because how you're an actor and you're trying to stage a fake hate crime. Why are you knowing damn well cameras might be in the area, especially if you're around a subway? Why are you telling these people, hey, call me this slur, say this slur, attack me over here, but make sure I'm fighting back. Make sure I get a good lick in on you because I want to look like the strong, independent, gay black guy who's fighting for gay rights because I got to fight back against these fear mongers. This was stupid to a biblical extent. I'm sorry, but how can anybody, because I know some of y'all still exist, y'all still out there, y'all get mad at me. How do y'all look at this guy and all the things, all the things he did and continue to do and say, yep, I'm going to back him. He got nothing. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Zero. <laughs> Kaput. He got it. So how are y'all going to sit here and pretend like this is somebody worth defending? Smuggle Nuts, who has long proclaimed his innocence, did not participate in the project, obviously, which arrives nearly two weeks after he filed an appeal challenging his 2021 disorderly conduct conviction and requesting a new trial. The Fox Nation special rehashes the rise and fall of the openly gay actor who had been starring in the hit Fox drama Empire, which followed the exploits of a cutthroat music mogul and his talented family for four years at the time of the incident. The brother alleges Smuggle Nuts didn't provide a specific motive, but wanted to be the poster boy for activism. The brother said he 
remarked afterward, yo, this Hollywood shit is crazy. And this dude, wow, I don't know what the hell he's on, but shit, we're a part of it now. Now it's time to, you know, carry on and follow through with it. Smuggled us reported being assaulted while walking back to his high rise from his subway restaurant. He said his attackers yelled slurs at him, declared Chicago was MAGA country, and poured chemical substances on him and hung a noose around his neck. And if you remember, they had body cam footage of this dude. And they walk in his apartment and he just sitting there. Hold on. Let me see if I got a, a, a rope. I, I got like a rope right here. This man is just sitting here with like a rope around his neck. Like, hi, everybody. Uh, you, you, you see that? Uh, you see that? You, you see this right here? This rope? They put this around my neck? I smell like bleach. Yo. We gotta do something. We gotta do something about this. This dude wasted all that fucking time, and he couldn't get nobody to buy his story. And people was supporting him for years. As police continued to investigate, Smuggler sat down with Good Morning America, and I think that was where the fear mongrel's comment came in. And I love that comment to death. He said, without any doubt in my mind, the surveillance image that the police released of two persons of interest, dark clothes, were the so-called perpetrators. Let that be known, too. So he set this up. He says, hey, you two, you're going to help me with this. Agree? Cool. He sent them out in the snow at 2 in the morning in Chicago in February, January, whenever that was. And he was willing to throw them under the bus. Once they got caught on surveillance footage, he threw them under the bus. Why, in any logical sense, would you defend him after that? These two were well within their right to say, nada. You going down, we going to try to get out of this. Eddie Johnson, who served as Chicago police superintendent from 2016 to 2019, admitted in the docuseries that police actually had a better photo of the suspects than the grainy one they initially shared, but feared inciting angst among Chicago's black and gay community. Because, of course, with somebody, whether if they're famous or not, is having an issue, you don't want to incite any weird rhetoric about black and gay people in the community. Because anybody at the time of people believing this saying, Hey, you're not providing information because you're just letting people go around. You're letting people do this. You're letting people do that. Not giving people any details. Yeah, that's a great idea, buddy. That's dumb. You sat there and was like, all right, we got a better picture. We got higher quality. We just not going to release it because we don't really want to cause any issues racially or homophobic wise to the community. I didn't want people to focus on that because it would cause more angst. So now the next day when everybody finds out about it, do you think we would have some issues in the city? Yeah, we would have. But that's because people are stupid. You can't really figure out what people's reactions are going to be because you have some people who will look at a school shooting and say it's obviously a white guy. But then when it's a black guy, they're quiet about everything that goes on after the fact. Within days, police determined the men were the Osendower brothers, small time actors who had worked at background players on Empire. Officers met them at the O'Hare International Airport where they returned from a trip to Nigeria. In the docuseries, the brothers say they were 100% believable as white supremacist characters. But the one brother recalled the uneasy feeling he experienced on the plane while replaying in his mind the information police had released to the media about the case. Two big ass police officers came up. I went with them and I was like, damn, it's over with. They got me. It was like a movie itself. The brothers eventually decided to cooperate with the police and Smuggle Nuts was hit with 16 felony counts of disorderly conduct for making a false report. He was accused of orchestrating a phony hoax to boost his music and acting career as Empire waned in popularity. But in a shocking move less than three weeks later, charges were dropped in the most sham politic move possible because this woman right here kim fox is not somebody i would trust to make sure things go through in a civil manner and we got into that situation as well so to wrap this up in all the stupidity am i gonna watch the docuseries no I don't need to. I've been having my own docu-series for the past four years. I have detailed this dude's every stupid move from being on a random show after disappearing for months to actually being in court. This dude keeps wanting you to know 
He was actually beat up by some racist homophobes who believe Chicago, of all places, is MAGA country. He will still say he is the victim of a hate crime. He will throw people under the bus who helped him with this because that's what a piece of shit does when they realize their foolproof plan did not actually pan out. I know that there is nothing that I will do here today that can come close to the damage you've already done to your own life. You've turned your life upside down by your misconduct and shenanigans. You've destroyed your life as you knew it. Uh, and there's nothing that any sentencing judge could do to you that can compare to the damage you've already caused to yourself. So subscribe to the channel. I will see y'all in the next one. And oh, by the way, if there's so much proof of him guilty, where is the proof of innocence? Goodbye.